Welcome to Digital Asset News Clips. We take the advancements in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. So today I want to do a deeper dive into Avalanche. And when I took a look at Avalanche, it's very hard to differentiate what makes Avalanche different and special and its, uh, and its special value proposition against all the other layer one solutions and smart contracts. And when I took a look at it, uh, I had to break it down as to the, the basic segments, which is, you know, is it valued or is it undervalued? Uh, what is it and why uh, Avalanche is important? Uh, where is this project actually going as far as a roadmap? We're going to take a look at the tokenomics and the team behind it, because if you watch the channel for any length of time, uh, you know that I'm always talking about investing into people. And lastly, we'll take a look at price prediction. So the first thing I want to just talk about real quick is what is the price? What is going on with this price? And when you take a look at Avalanche, the first thing that I always think about for projects is, man, I probably missed it. Because usually when we get this far in the game, usually when it first starts out, it's like, fractions of pennies or pennies. And when I'm at this point, I'm like, man, I wish I would have uh, picked it up a lot longer. So right now it is July 12th, 2021. And over the last 24 hours, we've seen a low of $11.84 and a high of 12.75. So just keep those numbers in mind. Let's take, let's jump back 30 days. And you would see that the high was 14 bucks, not too bad. 90 days, uh, we saw a high of around $40, which is pretty good. Uh, 180 days, six months or so. The all time high really was 55 bucks. And right now we're sitting at like 11, $12, which is pretty crazy. And now if we take a look at the max of where this, this project actually started out after it got out of the private sale, you were looking at five bucks, five bucks, $3, $4, somewhere around there. And right now it's about 11 or 12. So in all honesty, uh, we really haven't gone too far as far as price action. So that leads me to my next point, which is, uh, you know, what is Avalanche and why the heck do we need it? Because there's so many different options out there. This is where it gets interesting. So first up, uh, Avalanche or AVAX is a native token of the Avalanche platform used to secure the network through staking. It's going to come into play in a bit, paying for fees and provide a basic unit of account between multiple subnets created on the Avalanche platform. Well, that's a mouthful. Uh, basically, all this is is uh, Avalanche is just a token. It, that, that's what it's used to secure. That's the, uh, the the monetary system, and that's what you can use to, to stake and actually do all the great things that Avalanche does. And then, real quick, just so you know, for exchanges, Binance, uh, Pangolin, which is their de decentralized exchange, Gate.io, Bitfinex, Crypto.com. You can also get on Voyager. That's where I get my Avalanche. I've been I've been dollar cost averaging for quite some time. And then you can also do a pretty cool thing, put it on Ledger, which there's a nice little setup guide right here on the left-hand side. And uh, if you're into privacy or you're into security, that is one way to secure it on top of the wallet that you can create as a, a be a hot wallet. So that is kind of what uh, Avalanche is. Let's get into the why. Why the heck should we even care about this project? Because there's so many else out there, right? So I'm going to scroll down real quick. Let me blow this up so you can see what I see and makes it a little bit easier. So as far as like, there's these first two points here, build fast, low cost, solidity compatible dApps, which is all about Ethereum. So you can launch Ethereum dApps that confirm transactions instantly and process thousands of transactions per second. Let me say that again. You can process right now today without a layer two solution on Avalanche, thousands of transactions per second. Uh, and that's pretty good. Then you, and the, the middle part is the interesting part. Uh, you can launch customized blockchains, private and public. And when I get into this, it's going to make a lot more sense when I talk about how Avalanche, I believe, is kind of like the Amazon of cryptocurrencies. That's what that's what I made the whole thumbnail about because that's what I think it is. So what are we talking about here? Launch and customize private and public uh, blockchains. Well, it kind of comes out of this next part here because the whole thing for any kind of uh, crypto uh, currency or digital asset project is what do you do? What's your utility? What what is it? What is your function? What is your service? Are you just something that's just out there doing absolutely nothing and you're just a big cash grab or do you do stuff? So first of all, you have to think of like this use case as like two different ways or two different uh, generalizations of where it's going. Is it going, it's going for retail and it's going for like the corporations, the fortune 500s and the governments. So it's encompassing all that within it's one blockchain. So the first thing would be the retail, like the decentralized finance crowd, the DeFi crowd, you know, me and you, just the people hanging out. 
uh, and that is for asset issuance, automated market makers, uh, borrowing and lending. I like that part. Uh, derivatives uh, for all those different, uh, you know, like assets, like if you want to get like a derivatives, like futures and things like that. Uh, insurance on uh, on DeFi, if you need something like that. Peer-to-peer -peer payments and markets and stable coins, all that stuff that we're used to. And that's the part about the open decentralized ledger, right? I mean, it's all decentralized. But when it talked back here and it said that, uh, launch customized blockchains private and public that kind of scares people in the cryptocurrency space but it shouldn't because for the private part uh look there are some corporations and fortune 500 companies that don't want all their information and secrets out there there are governments surprise surprise who don't want uh, everything else out there so what they're going to do is avalanche is going look we've got it public for the retail and we get the private for the uh enterprises the fortune 500s and the governments and they're going to give them this type of thing digital identity so dids digital identities document tracking that's kind of important if you're you know uh pushing around different uh, things around in the uh, government sector about who has what intellectual property pretty big in corporations they probably need that to to verify who has what and uh and who owns what real estate supply chain and then think about this way this is the same thing that, that Cardano is trying to do in, in, in different aspects. If you don't have an ID, uh, you can't get access to finance as a, as a retail person. But if you don't have an have ID for your citizens, how can you verify who they are? How can you verify that, that, they, that they own a property? Someone could just come along, but like, you know, as far as like property go, no, I own this house or I own this, this, this acre of land. No, you don't, I do. Well, we had a civil war, you know, two years ago. So I had it back then and now it's mine. How do you prove that? Well, this is where uh, this comes in. And Avalanche, like I said, is trying to be uh, the Amazon of cryptocurrencies. Take a look at supply chain. Most people would think about VeChain right now. And that is their one little sector. But with Avalanche, like, you know what? We're going to do this for uh, supply chain. We're going to do this for medications. We're going to actually get uh, digital IDs. We're going to get this thing for finance. We're going to do it for retail. And all the things that encompass that at a fraction of a cost, with thousands of transactions per second. They're gonna make it cheap and they're gonna make it fast and they're gonna make it for everybody. That's why. So on top of that, they also wanna do a little NFT action, non-fungible tokens. And when we think about NFTs, to me, I always think about the artwork and the cool little things and you know the, the, the stuff that Hollywood puts out, but really NFTs could be anything, anything that you wanna put on the blockchain to verify that it is especially yours. And one of those things could be certifications and licenses and credentials. And on top of that, you could also do uh, NFTs just like they talk about here for intellectual property uh, and, and then for mortgages and uh, who owns what property as far as an NFT. And that's where it all fits together. So you got three different aspects and that comes down to part of the why. And then let's just, uh, let's jump back to uh, this little nice little graph here. Let me blow this up so you can see what I see. Because we're going to take a look at uh, how this all comes together. This would probably be the best view. Okay. So when I take a look at these projects, I'm trying to compare it to some of the big guys, right? And they did that for me. So they've got Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polkadot, and Avalanche. And on the left-hand side, it says transactional throughput, TPS, transactions per second. Well, Bitcoin is coming in at a whopping seven TPS, but that's okay. Because Bitcoin, in my personal opinion, on the layer one solution, it is not for as a currency. It is a, it is a, it is a store of value, in all honesty. Layer two solutions and lightning, sure, and you can do that in El Salvador, fine. But as far as like layer one, seven transactions per second. Ethereum, 14 TPS. Polkadot, pretty good, 1500 TPS. But Avalanche, right now, right now out of the gate, out of the box, 4,500 TPS, 4,500 transactions per second. You're talking about Visa level right there. Transactional finality, 60 minutes for Bitcoin, six minutes for Ethereum, Polkadot, 60 seconds, pretty good, really. And less than two seconds avalanche. Energy efficient, of course, yes, it is. Uh, for Bitcoin, no. And uh, yeah, it uses, uses a bunch of power. What are you gonna do? Number of validators. Now this part is interesting. Uh, three pools with greater than 51% hash rate. Now look, we've just had uh, this big mining exodus of all these Chinese miners coming out of China because they got kicked out by the government, which is great. I'm so happy. I'm glad that they got kicked out finally because then they can come here to Texas or Maryland or Miami or any place in North America, the EU, and they can set up shop and we'll welcome you with open arms. That's fantastic. So right now, when it says three pools with 51% hash rate, I don't think it's totally accurate. I think uh, we're gonna see a little bit more 
uh, decentralization of these uh, mining projects. At least uh, that's what I hope for. And then on top of that, we take a look at Ethereum. It says two pools with 51% hash rate. That's interesting. I didn't know that. That's not good. Polkadot has got about 200 nodes for Relay Chain. And Avalanche has, it says thousands of nodes, but I think in the next uh, documentation, it's got 978. So it's got a lot of nodes. We'll just say that. It's uh, pretty decentralized and that sounds good. As far as protection, uh, Bitcoin's proof of work, Ethereum's proof of work right now, proof of stake coming in, could be six months, could be a year, who knows? Uh, Polkadot, proof of stake and avalanche proof of stake and when i see proof of stake the first thing i think of is well how much am i going to get for staking that's the big thing so let's just take a look at this handy dandy website called stakingrewards.com and what's great about that is it lists uh the top uh, the top cryptos that you can stake and what you earn so real quick cardano uh, you can get a uh, 6% reward. And if you don't know, uh, we have two staking pools called DNews. That's the one that's always uh, in the uh, lurches in all the videos. So you can check that out. We got a video on how to stake with us at roughly between 4 and 6%. And uh, right now, the total staked is almost 70% for Cardano. Ethereum is uh, way behind at 5%, but it's got a lot locked up in DeFi. But you can get rewards of 6% pretty good. And let's just go down. Ba -ba 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 Avalanche. Here we go. So Avalanche, you're looking at uh, rewards of uh, almost 10%, 10% just for doing nothing, just to stake your Avalanche. That's crazy. And then total staked right now as it stands, 54%. So look, uh, I like uh, making money for doing nothing, just staking. So I will do that. And uh, I like that whole aspect. And then also just uh, before we move on, there was a part of, uh, there about the the dexes and it actually has uh are, are do they have dexes right now decentralized exchanges that actually are active and working and what kind of tokens and liquidity do they have well there's this one called pangolin pangolin.exchange i will link that in the description below you can just click on launch app and it's going to launch the dex and it's pretty cool it's just like what you would find on a uniswap and here's your avax token and you're going to connect to your wallet if you want to if you got a my ethernet wallet got a great video on that you can check it out later but uh let's see what kind of stuff they have um actually hold on let me let me back up first of all they've got four different options here let's look at the top 15 tokens which is the ones with i guess the most liquidity the ones that are most uh, uh transcribed or or um uh, put into effect as far as like exchanging you got eth link PFA, I don't know what that is, Snob, Spore, Sushi, Uniswap, USDT, Wavex, probably a wrapped avalanche, wrapped Bitcoin, and Zaba. Okay, great. Let's change that up and let's take a look at uh, the DeFi tokens. It's a little bit more here, Crack, Cycle, whatever else. Let's change that up. Let's take a look at uh, bu -bu -bu. Wait. this one here. Now we're talking uh, AVAX, ETH tokens. Now you got one inch, one up, two key, and you can just... Oh, there's a, so many, so many different tokens you can get on here. And you know what's crazy is that uh, you don't, you're not dealing with gas fees, obviously, because you're not using Ethereum blockchain, right? You're using Avalanche. So the question then becomes, well, if I'm going to use this decentralized exchange, what are my fees going to be? Because that's what I want to see. And if it's it's if it's as fast as it says, you know, less than two seconds, and the finale or the finale is less than two seconds, and it's got 4,500 transactions per second, then the fees have got to be crazy high, right? Well, let's take a look at what that is. So, uh, at docs.avax.network, here are the fees to create a blockchain. It's that's crazy. 0 0.01 to create a blockchain. Add a validator. Add a delegator. Zero. Create a subnet, import AVAX, export AVAX, 0 0.001, which is pretty much everything. And then simple send is a formula about 0 0.004. So what is that in dollars? Because that makes it, that's what makes sense to me. So right now, one AVAX is worth a whopping 12 bucks. Let's see here. 0 0.001 is about a penny. A penny for a transaction. So let that sink in. All right. So that's not too shabby. We take, we like that. Uh, so looking pretty good so far. Threshold, uh, as far as like, uh, you know, to attack the network, Bitcoin, 51% attack, Ethereum, 51%, a polka dot, 33, interesting. And Avalanche, 80% because of all the decentralization. Okay, oh, all right, all right. Here's the same thing we just talked about. Enterprises and governments, collectibles and blah, blah, blah. Now let's come down here to where we got the create a wallet, uh, explore uh, the uh, pathway or the um, 
uh, the path forward, and then the token info. And uh, actually, what we're taking a look here, taking a look at the wallet itself. So real quick, just so you know, uh, we already took a look at, you can use the ledger and there's a, there's a setup for that. I will link that in the description as well. But if you wanna set up a wallet just right now, you can access your wallet if you have one or create a new wallet. We're gonna click on create a new wallet. Let's generate a key phrase. And you know the whole uh, process of how this goes. I've got multiple videos on how to set up different wallets. Just go to danteachescrypto.com, the thing that spins above my head constantly. It's gonna generate a key phrase. I'm not gonna do that right now uh, because it wouldn't, uh, then you'll see it and you'll have my key phrase and then you can have all my crypto. So you could just so you know, you can create a wallet right here uh, on its own. So pretty easy, uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now we'll take a look at the uh, Explorer. So just like Ethereum, you can take a look at all the transactions that are on the blockchain. Just like Bitcoin, you can take a look at all the transactions. And just like Avalanche, you can do the, <laughs> the exact same thing. So the Explorer looks something like this. Well, first of all, here's all the different transactions that are going on. And if you just have your wallet, which looks like they all start with an X, uh, X, Avex, Avex, great. Then you can just take a look at all the different transactions that are going on. But what also is cool is that you can see all the different wallets that are being created. So like in a last hour, they had uh, 102 wallets created for Avalanche. Uh, today, or the last day, they had 1,400 wallets created. One week, 7,800. And in one month, we had 38,000, they had 38,000 wallets which were created. So if you believe in Metcalf's law and uh, the more utility or the more people that sign up for the network effect, uh, then you can see that uh, Avalanche is going in the right direction. And uh, that uh, sounds pretty good to me. All right, so we got the wallet. We open the Explorer. Uh, let's take a look at the road map, which uh, I have called, of course, where are you going? So where are you going for the roadmap? It's important to see not just like what things have happened, but where, what are their plans and, and how they're actually going to move this forward. So real quick, uh, there's three parts to every different quarter. So you got Q1, 2021, January, February, March, Q2, April, May, June, then July, August, September, and Q3. So just so you know, for the Avalanche platform, let me blow this up. You cannot see that whatsoever. Let's see. Here we go. So the Avalanche platform, it's going to talk about, honestly, all the nerd stuff. That's the, that's the best way I can say it. 50% uh, reduction in transaction fees. Well, that's not so nerdy. That's pretty good. Uh, removal of C-chain gas refunds, improvement in C-chain block index C and API upgrades, adding monitoring and consensus health check. Okay, great. I just, I, sure. The big thing that I always look at is the milestones. So right here in Q1, they did the DEX Pangolin, largest DEX on Avalanche launch, and it looks like it's looking pretty good. Hopefully they have li liquidity. Uh, 1 billion trade volume across all DEXs and 10 billion plus of AVAX staked to secure Avalanche. That was just in Q1. So what do they do in Q2, uh, April, May, June? Well, they had Avalanche reached uh, 100,000 uh, AVAX and total transaction fees burned because they actually burn uh, part of their AVAX for every transaction. They reached 950 validators. That's good for decentralization. They surpassed 100 team members. That's also good for growing the business. And uh, they got a new wallet. Good for them. And then Q3, let's take a look at major milestones. The first ILO launch, great. Uh, the new Avalanche Bridge V1 is coming up July to September, which is uh, industry first secure bridging five times cheaper than Avalanche to Ethereum Bridge. All right. 2x faster than AEB. Uh, there's a new wallet coming out. They're going to have a mobile, looks like a mobile wallet, browser. Oh, I like that. A browser extension. Nice. And uh, a new bridge, new bridge version three and a new marketplace. All right. Well, let's see. Well, the SDK. And then uh, in Q4, end of the year, we're looking at uh, namespace, new wallets, new Avalanche Bridge and so on and so forth. So look, as far as like where they're going, uh, it looks like they're uh, going in the right uh, direction. So uh, that is a good part. Now, let's get to, I think, one of the bigger things, which is the tokenomics and the team. Because if in the channel for a while, you know that I feel that if you invest in the people, uh, it, usually things work out pretty well. So real quick, let's take a look at uh, the tokenomics and uh, who the heck these people are. So we know what Avalanche is. And then uh, it's built by a pretty good team led by the creator of the first coin minted through proof of work and supported by pioneering research from Cornell University. Uh, I got to have them explain that one. Uh, the first coin minted through proof of work. All right. 
Avalanche is bringing the third major accomplishment in distributed systems to the world after classical and Nakamoto consensus protocols. And I think we all know that from Bitcoin, right? So let's move down here. Uh, tokenomics, token economic facts. AVAX is a cap supply token. It's 720 million and 50% of those tokens will be on the mainnet and the other one will be locked up. AVAX serves as, I mean for time. AVAX serves as the base unit of account Avalanche network, provides the base security, pays for operations, provides providers utility services. AVAX transaction fees are burned, increasing scarcity of AVAX. Now here was the token sale, which really came down to tokenomics. The token sale started on July 15th. That was in uh, 2020. So that was about a year ago, right? Total maximum number of tokens to be sold in the public sale was 72 million. And uh, we're talking about the max was 720, 360 is on the main net. And they only put out 72 million for this private sale or 20% of the main net supply. And here was the option, um, staking around for one year vesting. Option allows participants to purchase tokens at 50 cents a, geez, 50 cents a token for private sale. And let me just say this. I hate being in America sometimes because these private sales, we can't get into these private sales, which clearly kind of sucks. If I would have known about this, I probably would have gotten into it, but I couldn't have gotten into it because I'm an American and that's just how it works. And people will say these different options, but I'm not uh, risking it. But uh, that's a big bummer if you ask me, but uh, it is what it is. So just remember that as things go on. All right, so we got the public sale, tokens at 50 cents, uh, public sale option B. Uh, this option allows participants to purchase tokens at 85 cents a token with no lockups. And see for the first one, the tokens at 50 cents, you had to lock it up for a year and a half. The first one you get the first one was 50 cents a token but you had to get a year vesting or lockup with quarterly unlocking so as we look at this over time just so you know that was 20 percent of the total uh here's the token here's the token offense or the distribution of the total supply the staking rewards are 50 percent 50 percent of all the tokens are stake staking rewards now you got the foundation at 10 percent, but they have a lockup period airdrop was two and a half the team got 10 percent. again lockup public sale 10 10 percent. private sale three seed sale two and a half strategic partners five and community development uh seven percent so pretty much the basic things that you'd like to see where things are actually locked up and here is the total lockup schedule and you can see it goes from zero months all the way to four years or 48 months. And it's going to be a time released type of uh, situation. So uh, don't worry because at 12, so we've already seen the lockup periods expire over time, but now we're in July of 2021. So we're down about here, right in the darn middle, just about where things get unlocked. But uh, it doesn't seem like it's a ton of it, just that that is what it is. And then moving down, that is essentially the tokenomics of what's going on. And here's some great quotes from people, which I thought was funny. Vitalik Buterin goes, I think it's very fair to treat Avalanche and Bitcoin as having similar levels of legitimacy. That's pretty big from uh, Vitalik. Uh, Avalanche has genuinely interesting tech, which is pretty pretty interesting because Charles said the same thing. Avalanche is going to be an interesting coin that comes out and there's a lot of interesting ideas there. Again, these are great, these are great ideas and, and things that are going on, but it all comes down to who is executing and how well do they execute and run their business? So here are the actual team members. Uh, you've got, uh, this would be the CEO, Emin Gunn Sira. I think I nailed that. Uh, well known for having implemented the first currency that used proof of work to mint coins. Well, that's kind of big. First guy to do that. Interesting. Co-authoring the famous selfish mining paper, characterizing the scale and centralization of existing cryptocurrencies, having proposed the leading protocols for on-chain and off-chain scaling, and many more seminal works. Then you got the president, John Wu, uh, 20 years of experience as a fintech exec, most recently a CEO of Shares Post Digital Asset Group. And when I talk about the people, you gotta, you gotta remember something. When I look at teams, I look at people who have already done things, who have already been there and actually had success. Because if you know, like I, I, I do an example of the uh, PayPal mafia. And a lot of people that created PayPal, like uh, a Peter Thiel, who's a billionaire investor, like an Elon Musk, who we all know that guy. And then uh, like a bunch of people, like a like a, a Chen who went on to create YouTube and a lot of different people, like also the creator of LinkedIn. They've already been there. They've already done a lot of things. They've had a massive success. So I take a look at that. And then I take a look at like the Ethereum mafia. You know, you got Charles Hoskinson. You got Dr. Gavin Wood, uh, who, for, who for Polkadot. And of course, Vitalik is still there. 
But when I take a look at these people, I'm like, what have you done before that would allow you to have the mentality to scale a business into the multi-billions into what it could potentially come? So this is why it's so important. I mean, you can just start from scratch and have like a Steve Jobs who's never done it and just all of a sudden create Apple, but uh, it's all about percentages and chances. So I just try to look for people who have done things uh, before to, not that it's gonna guarantee, but make success uh, potentially in the future. So uh, moving back, uh, you've also got uh, uh, Ted Yin, CPA. Yeah, his research works include the snow avalanche protocols and the hot stuff protocol, hot stuff, which is the foundation consensus protocol used by Facebook Libra. So there is probably where you get the whole uh, information as far as like is like the corporations and and the uh, uh, private blockchains. And then Kevin Sicknicki, I think I nailed that. Kevin was a PhD candidate in computer science at Cornell, conducting research in distributed systems, cryptography, security, economics, previously did research in software engineering at prominent organizations, including Microsoft and NASA, JPL, no slouch. So look, uh, that's a pretty good team. And if you just had these four guys, you're like, man, that's pretty good. But uh, it goes beyond that. And they are scaling massively for some pretty big things. And they break it up by business operations, uh, and then to design, engineering, and then lastly, which I think is probably one of the most important parts, is marketing. And uh, when you look at this this uh, information of, of who it is, I was like, how do they, because most, most businesses, they start with like the CEO and then the CFO and the COO, and they kind of go down for whatever else, but they just alphabetize this. I thought it was interesting. They alphabetize it by B, business operations, and then they went to uh, D, design, E for engineering, uh, and then marketing. I thought, <laughs> just do it, do it fairly by, uh, <laughs> by alphabetized, which is a pretty good idea. And they've got a lot of people. And the big thing really comes down to this. Before I move on to price prediction, it's really, it really comes down to these guys, the marketers. It sounds to me like they've already built a pretty great, uh, project, uh, a, a pretty great uh, blockchain with what's going on. If you have really fast and really cheap transactions, uh, that's pretty much the battle right there. Now, the big thing is, why is an avalanche bigger? Why is it listed at 50? It's because they don't have the partnerships. They don't have the big partnerships and they haven't been in as far as Ethereum has been in. And they're not on the tip of everybody's tongue uh, as far as like in the, the mentality. So really it comes down to this. This could be the great restaurant that is right down the street that nobody goes to because they don't know how great the food is, but they have to make sure that they do that. And the only way they can get that done is through execution. And of course, great products will push through that, but it also has to be great marketing, getting out there into the, to the public consciousness, making sure that they get those partnerships and those advisors do what they're supposed to do, which is advise them to go in the right direction. And that is uh, the big thing of what makes businesses run. And uh, I like what they're trying to do. You know, they're trying to do like everything as far as like in blockchain. Even if they don't make it 100% on every single thing that they do, it doesn't matter. They just got to get that, you know, either they get the one niche or the three to five different things that just are awesome. And maybe some just are lagging. I, it doesn't really matter. Uh, just as long as they get that those things out there. So if you take a look at what they're trying to do and what they've done and and who they have and where they're going this is a solid project this is a great project and if you're looking if you just believe that you know you're looking at uh you know cheap transactions fast transactions and you have a lot of different options avalanche looks pretty good so let's get to uh what i like to call <laughs> what everybody calls the price prediction so what i like to do first of all is just go First of all, it's a layer one solution, okay? Not layer two solution. It's got smart contracts. It's already got those 4,500 transactions per second. Just needs those things that we talked about. So how do they do that? Well, that's up for them to, to do it. I, that's not my job. I mean, I'm just, I just see a, a great project. And if, like I said, if they execute, they're doing good. So what I take a look at first is, let's just take a look at the market cap and go from there. So Ethereum, you're looking at a market cap of 238 billion. Uh, Bitcoin is 623 billion. So we know that a cryptocurrency can get there. And we are down at 1.4 trillion market cap. We were already at 2.5 trillion, so it was much higher than this. So let's just say, 
for the sake of argument, we want to get to 200 billion wherever ETH is, right? Which would is, which is be higher than Tether, higher than BNB. But as time goes on, do you not think that all the different things that they're going for, the government, the corporations, the retail, the DEXs, the NFTs, and, and the supply chains, do you think they can't hit that within however many, much time it takes? I don't see why not. So what we need to do, let's scroll down here and let's take a look at AVAX. I think it was 720 million max supply, but the circulating supply right now, the circulating supply is 172 million with 377 million. AVAX, come over here, market cap 2.1 billion, which matches up to, yeah, roughly that's what it is. So let's just say that was $12. So then at $55, which is at all time, it's all time high. What was its market cap? Whoops. Now we're looking at 9.4 billion. Not too bad. And then again, just as a refresher, if we were taking a look at, oh, Ethereum at 238 billion, let's say if it could hit, I don't know, let's try $300, 51 billion. Let's try $500, 86 billion. Let's try <laughs> $1,000, 172 billion dollars, not even close. Let's go to 1200. Why couldn't Avalanche go to around $1,200 and hit a 200 billion market cap? Why not? I don't see it's outside the realm of possibility for what we're looking at. So that is really in a nutshell. Now, what I'd like to do is to bring it over and let's uh, let's have somebody talk to us uh, from the Avalanche team and just see exactly where they're going and uh, if I'm just uh, way off here. All right, everybody. So we just took a look at uh, pretty much a deep dive into what Avalanche is and what's going on. But what I really need to do was I need to bring in somebody to just kind of put a face behind this this enormous project. So I brought in uh, VP of Marketing, Jay Kurahashi Sofu. I think I got that right. Yep. And I just wanted to make sure there was two questions I had because there was some things that I glanced over because it's a long video. First of all, talk to us real quick, Jay, about finality. And then of course, the bigger, broader question is, where's Avalanche going? How are they going to you know, make these huge moves? Because there's so much competition out there. So first, Jay, thanks for coming on. Second, uh, if you could answer those questions, it'd be great. Let's do it. Thanks for having me, Rob. Yeah. So first part with the transaction finality, Avalanche is something that's really unique, not only in the blockchain space, but also in the traditional finance space. But of course, we are tackling the the lowest uh, to home, I guess, or the kind of the lowest funnel uh, line item in our case, which is all of the blockchains that are in the space and seeing what resonates most with, uh, I guess, decentralized finance users, yeah. um, NFTs and kind of everything else in between. And when it comes to transaction finality, Avalanche, because of the Avalanche consensus protocol, can finalize transactions in under one second. That's one mm -hmm. of the few value props. And the other ones would be throughput and the thousands of transactions per second as it stands today. And then also decentralization, how many nodes can be powering the platform. And right now we have about a thousand nodes all across the world that are all producing blocks. That's pretty um, awesome. And with yeah. the transaction finality side of things, I think that's really, compelling not only in the blockchain or let's start with the blockchain space i think it's very compelling with the blockchain space because there aren't that many uh block uh, layer one blockchains with smart contracts enabled on them that can come relatively close to that figure there are blockchains out there that can do you know five to ten seconds 30 mm -hmm. seconds a minute and we all know kind of the bigger ones with with how fast they're able to finalize the the, the transactions there yeah and when it comes to avalanche in itself the the coolest thing you're seeing is especially i come from the ethereum uh world at least most recently uh, using metamask connected to ethereum versus avalanche i love the ethereum ecosystem have nothing to, to say against it i think it it's just that same instance of of experience that you've kind of been used to for the last few years now, especially when the network is congested, you're just sitting around, could be 10, 20, 30 minutes where your transaction is trying to get processed by the miners. In Avalanche, the coolest thing, at least when I first joined the team and, and when the platform was de deployed, was really seeing using the same MetaMask tools, all of the Ethereum compatible tooling because the Ethereum virtual machine runs on it, and then yeah. seeing that transaction kick through in, in seconds. And that was to me like the, the magic moment. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting because like like I, 
I know with Visa, before I got into this whole world, I, I just thought Visa was the fastest around. You know, they had, you know, pretty good uh, throughput transaction per second, but the finality, they don't finalize the transactions like we think they are. They think, oh, it just goes right through. But what, that's interesting that you say that because I didn't know about the finality part of Avalanche. So I'm glad you brought it up. So then Jay, this will transition to our next part. Everything is looking pretty good for Avalanche, right? I mean, you guys have a fantastic team. You guys have uh, really put in, in the work as, as far as uh, the actual technology, uh, as far as like uh, the blockchain, the uh, throughput, transaction per second, all those types of things. And then of course, it's very cheap, which is what is most impressive for me and a lot, a lot of my viewers. So what's gonna happen coming into the future? How are you guys trying to not just win this, not win the space, but become a part of the space and really push, push the narrative that Avalanche really belongs here. So what's on the horizon? Yes, so on the horizon, we are pushing a lot of effort into the Ethereum virtual machine. It's the strongest value proposition for people who have already built on Ethereum or even um, people who are interested in deploying a smart contract enabled application. Solidity is the most used uh, development language for smart contracts. So instead of reinventing the wheel, we kind of lean into what is already more or less the status quo, at least in the, the early innings of, of crypto. Sure. And what we were pushing through, at least in Q1 of 2021, was really trying to, to entice these existing projects, the leading ones, of course, and then also the new projects to come over and see what that experience is. What we came to learn was we need interoperability bridges. That is something that is very, very important because it's much easier to convince, especially traders, but much easier to convince someone to say, hey, let's use the crypto liquidity that you have in your ecosystem and let's make that work. Let's transfer that over and see what that can do on, in this ecosystem, as opposed to saying, hey, let's use the, the cash that you've earned. So, so uh, and, as you worked through to actually um, work very hard and earn earn those bills and convert those in an exchange and do the the process that we all know is to be true um, with with the exchange process, right? And so, actually, in the coming weeks, uh, I think once this this web this episode might be out by this time, we are going to have a version two bridge that connects both Ethereum and Avalanche. And the value proposition versus the old one is it's faster, cheaper, and the most important, easiest, easier to use. I've used it in a test environment. It's yeah. literally a few clicks and you can transfer ERC-20 tokens uh, very simply and basically just requires co uh, confirmations on both sides, Ethereum and Avalanche. And then you have that asset in your Ethereum address only connected on the Avalanche side. Because just as a reminder, since the Ethereum virtual machine runs, you could actually use the same 0x address yeah. as long as you're connected to Avalanche. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's huge. So yeah, if we can get this, uh, the whole bridge concepts or the whole bridge part of it going through, I mean, who wouldn't, who doesn't want faster, cheaper, and maybe just a little bit better? I'll take it. All exactly. Right. Jay, that, those are my uh, two big questions. Any last words of wisdom for any of the uh, uh, crypto investors out there? Yeah, so I think to, to maybe like cap out the kind of coming soon header, Really excited for a lot of these new applications or these existing applications to come over. We have a lot of conversations in the pipeline. The, the, the I's have been dotted, the T's have been crossed at this point. It's just a matter of getting this bridge up and also kind of the, the remaining uh, primitives on the, on the DeFi Lego pieces of things to really come into place. That's what I'm really holding out for. Um, and I think the Q3, Q4 for Avalanche will be a really big one. Yeah, it's like I always said, I always think Q4 2021 and Q1 2022 are going to be fireworks. Exactly. So we exactly. will see if we're all right. All right, Jay, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you coming in and let's uh, jump back. Okay, so we already did a deep dive on Avalanche about uh, what it all is and everything that it entails. We had somebody from Avalanche come in and talk to us and uh, now we're gonna talk about staking. So depending on where you're watching this video, if you're watching this on YouTube as it is all together, or if uh, I've broken these up into two different videos, you can find the Avalanche Deep Dive. I will link that in the description, or it'll also be at the, at the end of this video. Or if you're watching the whole thing together, uh, then of course, this is just seamless. And also, if you're watching this over at uh, danteachescrypto.com, just know that uh, everything that we talk about, the links for everything will be right below 
uh, the video itself or on YouTube. The links will be in the description. So what we're going to talk about today right now is uh, why should we stake our avalanche? We're going to do a wallet avalanche wallet setup, how to transfer your avalanche from an exchange to the wallet, the difference between an exchange to P chain and the rewards you can expect. And uh, then we're going to talk about uh, the Dan avalanche stake pool ID and how to stake to that. So the first thing I want to talk about is why stake it? Why even stake avalanche right now? Because on some exchanges, you can just go over there and, and gain some yield. And you're like, well, it's great. And the answer is you you don't have to move it. You can keep it right there and you can gain yield. But here's the thing about exchanges is that some exchanges actually do stake your avalanche, but a lot of them don't. A lot of them rehypothecate your avalanche. They give it to hedge funds or to institutions, and they're able to do whatever they want to do with that. They, uh, they can short things. Uh, they can put it out in different markets. They can do essentially whatever it is. And then here's the, the uh, odd thing about that. And, and we've talked a lot of different, uh, different exchanges about their terms of service. Uh, they're not responsible uh, if something happens or there's a big hack. So just know that if something goes wrong, uh, you're on the hook and you don't own anything, really. So when you're talking about state Taking uh, Avalanche with Avalanche, you keep it in your Avalanche wallet, which we're going to set up in a little bit. You have control of your private keys and you decide uh, what happens. So that is uh, the, the one big thing to keep yourself safe. Uh, also, just know that, uh, again, some exchanges are not staking it. They're just uh, rehypothecating it. And uh, if you stake your Avalanche, you are actually uh, securing the network. And it actually kind of works uh, pretty well in that regard. So again, it's up to you. Your goals are not my goals. I personally stake and uh, I'm a validator here. So what I want to do real quick is do a uh, Avalanche uh, wallet setup. So what we're going to do is go to this, uh, this site, looks just like this, and it's uh, wallet.avax.network. And uh, it's pretty simple right here. It's going to ask, do you want to access the wallet you have or create your new wallet? So I already have one, but just so you know how this works, you're just going to click on create new wallet. And if you click on generate the key phrase, that's going to generate a mnemonic phrase. So if something happens, you can get back into your wallet. Never share this with anybody. Make sure you write this down. I personally use a stone book. There are links in the description or right below if you're on Dan Teaches Crypto. And it saves them all right there. So they're uh, really ready and handy. Do not lose this. And also don't write this down and put it in or type it into your computer because your computer get hacked as well keep it offline old-fashioned is sometimes the best so uh, that is how to generate a wallet I already have one so I'm going to go back real quick I'm gonna click on access wallet and there's a number of ways to access your wallet again you use the private key the mnemonic key phrase that uh, we just generated before or what's called a key store file and a key store file is uh, you can do that in the advanced part of the wallet. It makes it just simple to get in, but it doesn't really matter. So whatever you want to do. So I'm going to find my key store file, put it in my password, and I'll be right back. Okay, pretty simple, right? We've already set up our wallet, and this is what mine looks like. And you're going to notice that it's, it's a little bit different than some of the wallets that you're used to. There is what's called uh, right here. It's called the X chain, the P chain, and the C chain. Just so you know, just to give you an overview of what the heck is going on and why that's so important. Uh, there is three types. So the AVEX, to AVAX tokens exist on the X chain where they can be traded on the P chain where they can be provided as a stake when validating the primary network, which we're going to do in a second. And on the C chain where they can be used in smart contracts or to pay for gas. So that's important to know uh, those three terminologies. So again, uh, we have the X chain, which is where right now all my AVAX is, which is a whopping 28, uh, the P chain and the C chain. So what we want to do right now is uh, I want to show you, if you don't know, uh, is how to transfer AVAX from your exchange into your new Avalanche wallet. I'm going to make this uh, very quick and simple or as simple as I could possibly make it. And I'm just going to use KuCoin. And KuCoin's pretty easy to work with. Uh, here we've got a bunch of my whopping 5.7 Avalanche here. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on Withdraw. And when I withdraw, then it's going to ask me, okay, what wallet, network, amount, and remarks? So where do I find the wallet? Well, I'm going to go back over here. And it's Avalanche. Let me blow this up so you can see this. So again, X chain, P chain, C chain. I want to show you what would happen because I want to use the X chain, right? That's the exchange. That's when I want to transfer things. I'm not going to stake it right now. So if I use the P chain, what would happen as far as if I screwed up? So I'm going to copy this where it says P A V A X U N T Q blah 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 blah, and I'm going to go back to KuCoin, and I'm going to put in this wallet address that I just did, and it's going to ask me about the network. It says contains invalid or sensitive information. 
and see everything. Let's see if I can do this. Address does not match the chosen network. How about an ABAC C chain? It does not match the, the, the network. So I can't do anything right now because I'm not on the right chain. So I'm gonna go back and do the right thing that I'm supposed to do where I'm on the X chain up here. I'm gonna click on the copy button and I'm gonna go back to KuCoin and I'm gonna wipe this out because I uh, it's not right. Put this in and then come back here and it's gonna say that's not right, but maybe Ah, there it is. I'm on the right chain or the night network, the X chain. So now I can withdraw from exchange. So I've got a max of 5.7. I'm a baller. So let me put in two. <laughs> and I want to put this to, I'll just say, to a VAX wallet. And it's going to say, do you want to confirm? Yes, I want to confirm. Before I do that, uh, this is something I always do. I just I just compare the first four uh, characters, XAVAX, and then the last four, uh, NUNQTJ or something like that. Let me take a look over here. Is that right? XAVAX, NUNQTJ. Okay, it looks right. I just want to make sure because uh, uh, I'm a control freak. So confirm. And then I'm going to click on, does this look right? Yeah, it looks right. Confirm withdrawal. And then it's going to ask me for my password and a code and all this stuff because I like security. I don't want to get ripped off. So let me put that in right now. And let's see. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to click on send code to my phone, which should be, actually should go pretty much right away. Let me make sure. Yeah, and there it is. Wow. Let me put this in. 980. <laughs> and this only lasts for 45 seconds, so it doesn't really matter. And submit. And bam, I am successful. So now this is going to take, usually it takes a couple of minutes to hit my wallet, but uh, that, it's not important right now. We'll, we'll check it out in a second. Here's all, my, here's all my different transactions I have over here. But I just want to show that to you so you know exactly how that works, is how to transfer and, uh, your avalanche from your exchange to your wallet. And again, every wallet is different, but it's the same kind of process almost. It's just find a way to, to hit a button to where you withdraw or do whatever, and then just find the right, uh, just uh, copy and paste that wallet address and off you go. So now what I wanna talk about <clears throat> is what's called uh, the X chain to P chain and the rewards. What am I talking about here? So this right here, let's go back to our wallet though. And you got portfolio on the left-hand side, send, which we don't really care about right now, and what's called cross-chain. And you can see right here, it says source X to destination uh, P. And what they're talking about here, when we go down to earn, uh, just to make this very crystal clear, where it says uh, to validate, you need 2,000 AVAX. Okay, we don't, we, you don't, we don't have that right now. Uh, but for delegation, uh, if you do not own an Avalanche node but want to stake your using node, you must have at least 25 AVAX on the P chain to become a delegator. Okay, so that means essentially is that all those tokens that we just went from KuCoin to the X chain, now you have to go from the X chain to the P chain, which is pretty simple because we click on cross chain and it says the source X destination P down here, source X to P, how much do I want to put? Ugh, I don't want to put the max. Let's just put 27. I'm going to put 27 ABAC, so I need a minimum of 25 to get this going. And there's a fee of 0 0.002, which is like 20 cents or something like that. I don't know. Right now, I think Avalanche is like 30 bucks. Okay. So I'm going to click on confirm. And it's going to say, do you want to do this? Yes, I do. Transfer. And it's going to go, okay. Export to import. And committed. So now what I want to do is just to make sure if I look up here in the top, top middle here, it says, here's my balance. What's on the X chain? 3.994. What's on the P chain? 27 AVAX. Now we can do what's called go to earn and we want to delegate and we're going to add a, what's called a delegator right here. So click on that. And then just, you know, look at these fees. Woo. So there's different nodes, just like in every place, you know, uh, Cardano or Solana, whatever else, there's different fees for it, right? Some are 10%, 20%, 5%. That seems pretty reasonable. And uh, a validator stakes and so on and so forth available and blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, man, what? 50% fees. That's crazy. Okay. It doesn't matter. So what I want to show you is up here, let me 
zoom out a little bit. It says select a node to delegate. You're welcome to delegate to anybody you want to, but I hope that you would delegate to the digital, digital asset news uh, avalanche stake node. And we need a, a node ID. Where do we find that? Well, a great thing is that I made this as super simple as I possibly could. If you go over to danteachescrypto.com, the thing that circles above my head constantly, uh, when we go there in the uh, upper part here for the menu, it says home, sign up, about, reviews, blog, contact, staking. We've got two. We've got all the information you want to know about Cardano staking. And then there's also, I added this in a couple nights ago, Avalanche staking or AVAX. So we're going to click on AVAX staking and it's going to take us over here to this nice little page. And it's going to talk about Digital Asset News AVAX stake pool. And this is all the information that you need about uh, our stake pool. So just so you know, uh, the owner pledge, uh, I pledged 50,000 AVAX, which was no small feat. Let's just be honest. 50,000 at around 30 bucks. Yeah, 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 a little bit. So with this, this is what I pledged and I put it up for a year. I'm staking it for a year. I believe in Avalanche. I believe in the team. So I want to show everybody this is how it's going to work out. So I got 30,000 AVAX. Works pretty well. Transparency. If you want to find out all the information we just started, you can click on here and it's going to take you to this nice uh, staking of our AVA scan about our node. And node ID is right here. It says EB blah, 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 blah. Okay, and that's us. And we're staking for a complete year and we put in 50,000. Okay, so be before we go on, uh, just so you know, you can find that, that node ID there. I put the node ID also up here so you can find it very simply. Um, the videos itself, here's the deep dive. If you wanna watch it, it's over there. Here's all the links you need. See, it has, uh, we've got roadmap. So you can take a look at the roadmap of Avalanche, which we talked about in the deep dive, the website for AVAX network. And then you click on this, this will take you to the wallet where we just created it in the beginning. And also it's some tokenomics right there. And then as you, uh, let me see here, as you scroll down here, this is the video you're watching right now, which is about how to stake it. So just so you know, there's a little bit of differences between like an Ethereum staking, a Cardano staking and an Avalanche staking. And here's how it really works out. It goes like this. So for Ethereum, you have to lock up your Ethereum for until Ethereum 2.0 comes out. Could be a year, it could be two, nobody knows. Uh, just depends. And that also you are not keeping in your own wallet. It's going to another wallet uh, for a validator. And that's how it goes. So you're not in control of it, really. Uh, also, uh, on Cardano, uh, it's a, kind of the opposite. Uh, you keep it in your, your Daedalus, your Roy, or Ada Light wallet. You control your private keys. And there's no lockup time. So you can remove it at any time you want to. This is good and bad. Uh, because you can take it out whenever you want to, but that means that anybody else can take it out. And since it's not locked up, uh, that means that it's really not off the market any, any one time. It's good for, for easy use and everything else, but uh, to see like all the different tokens that are locked up, um, if you can lock up a ton of tokens and if that would decrease the actual uh, supply because it's all locked up for years or whatever else, uh, and you still have the same demand, what happens to the price? It usually goes up. Here's how it works with Avalanche. Avalanche, you're going to keep it in your wallet, the Avala Avalanche wallet you just created. You're in control of your private keys like I talked about. However, you're going to have to pick a lockup time period, and that could be between two weeks and a year. And right now, a year, you're getting about 10% yield, which is pretty good, let's be honest, uh, for just locking up and doing absolutely nothing. Uh, you can pick six months, you can pick two weeks, whatever, uh, but there's different time frames that you can do. And the, the less time frame that you pick, the less your yield. So I think like in six months, you get around 4.99% uh, uh, for six months. Again, uh, the more people that actually lock it up for a longer period of time, I think the more that we'll see an increase in the price because people can't get any more avalanche because it is locked up for all this time. And now it comes down to you. What is the best option for you? Um, I don't know because um, your goals are not my goals. So it's up to you to decide do I, what I want to do, how long I want to lock it up. And that's pretty much what it comes down to. So let's take, let's go back here. I kind of got off a little bit. Um, <clears throat> the website itself, we've already copied the ID. Let me do it one more time just to make sure. That is the node ID. You can find a couple different places. I will actually link it in the description in the YouTube video. I will link it below at Dan Teaches Crypto. I have it on the webpage, so it's very easy to find. Let's go to our wallet and we're going to search for a node ID. We're going to paste that in. And there we are. So 
Validator stake, 50,000. Available, 200,000. That means this, how much more can be delegated to this, this validator? So for ours, I've already put in 550,000, okay? And we only have a maximum uh, amount to be saturated at 200,000. I expect this to happen very quickly and we just want to keep it low. Uh, this is where we're at. So this will be our uh, uh, pool will be for a year. You're welcome to delegate for two weeks, six months, a year, whatever you want to do. And this is our fee, which is 5%. So you just saw some other fees were 50%, 20%. There was like one 5%. Um, and ours is 5%. And what that means is the reward that you get in AVAX, uh, that's just the charge we have. So like if you get 100 AVAX for however much time, we just charge 5%. So we're gonna take a whopping five AVAX for doing all those things and that's it. So that's really what we got. All right, so next thing I'm gonna say, I'm gonna click on uh, select. And then real quick before I do that, if you wanna take a look at um, uh, just how much is being locked up and, and how much you could potentially get, as far as like uh, lockup periods, I mean, uh, for staking, if you look at Cardano, just so you know, total stake for Cardano is 70%. That's a lot. But if you look at Avalanche, you know how much is staked already? Or how much is locked up, really? Locked. 56%. So when I talk about the price appreciation in the, in the, in the deep dive video, I mean it. I think this could be a very big thing. And it's, uh, I think it's almost, uh, it's, a, it's a balance between the, the, the best of both worlds. And then if you want to take a look at uh, uh, the rewards, just go, I'll link this also, it's under staking rewards. If you put in, uh, let's see here, $1,000 worth of uh, AVAX for a year, it's about 10%. And uh, let's go for 180 days, you're looking at 5%. Uh, 90 days, it goes even two and a half percent. So again, it just depends on, on how much you want to lock up and, uh, and go from there. So that's uh, really what it comes down to as far as rewards. So let's go back and select this one and go here. So just so you know, node ID, EB, blah, 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 5PP, the five is 5%. Five uptime, our uptime for the Cardano stake pool is 99.9%. .9%. We're going to have the same on Avalanche. Uh, active stake is 50,000. Available stake is 200,000. The stake start date was, uh, looks like it's August 17th. So that was just two days ago. And the stake date ends August 17th, 2022. Uh, so the staking end date. Now this is where you pick it. Your AVAX tokens will be locked until this date, September 9th, 2021, if you want to. Let's pick something a little bit later. Let's go to the 13th. And... Let's do a max. And this is, and the staking duration is 86 days. Estimated rewards, it'll put it right here, 0 0.57. The fee is 0 0.03 AVAX. It's pretty low, but that is what's 5%. Uh, um, yeah, 5% of 0 0.57 and off you go. So let's just do max and see what our estimated rewards would be. So for, <laughs> it's funny, for 27 AVAX, we're gonna get almost three. And the fee is 0 0.14. Again, the longer you pick, uh, the more it is. And you can do an AVAX. You can see that in USD, how much that's worth. It's pretty good. And then there's the fee. So you get $86, the fee is $4. And I'm just gonna go for a year. One, let's just confirm it. Now, once I confirm this, just so you know, you are locked in. You can't move this around. You can't go, ah, I didn't really wanna do that. I wanna take it out. So again, be very careful with how you stake. You wanna go two weeks, Three months, six months, uh, a year. How much do you want to go? And uh, and that is it. So let's click on uh, confirm. Again, it's going to 27 AVAX. Delegation will start five minutes after you submit the form. So if you want to change, you're like, well, I didn't do that right. And da da da, -da off you go. And then we're going to click on submit. And right there, we are what is known as committed. You are committed. And that's it. All right. So that, my friends, is all we have as far as for staking. So look, um, I hope this uh, staking video helped you out and uh, made you, uh, helped you in your, your decision. Again, this is the not financial advice. This is a financial opinion. And again, your goals are not my goals, but I just want to make it as easy as possible and as thorough as possible so you understand the whole process of how this all works. Again, you can find the information over at uh, danteacherscrypto.com. Click on staking 
and AVAX staking. You'll find all the information there. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And that's it for today. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.